All right, good to see you guys, and we'll get started. Uh, for us, uh, as we got you know going on this Wednesday, it's it's nice. We're uh, right back into our division uh, and right back into it with a road mentality. Um, what we told the team, uh, like you'd expect, uh, last time out is not a gauge for this time out. What that means is uh, each matchup's different, situation's different. Uh, opponents different, location, all of that. Uh, what can be the same uh, is the focus and the preparation that goes into getting to that space where you can really play well. So um, that's you know something we shared with the club today and uh, as we're getting started. So uh, it'll require a different focus, different matchups, and uh, but uh, we're ready to go fight and, and get our you know preparation fully underway uh, beginning today. So glad to open up to you guys. Uh, a few guys before we start will be out today, uh, Freeman and Hooper. Uh, Ishmael and Schweitzer um, and Ryan Allen, our punter, um, they'll be out uh, today. Uh, Matt Ryan will also hold and participate in some walkthrough and do it similar like we did last week. We'll ramp his reps up um, as the week progresses. So that's where we're at and uh, glad to open up to you guys. Uh, yeah, Coach, uh, after reviewing the you know, pass rush and finally uh, you know, uh, getting some, some good results, what were some of the things you saw in that uh, well, I'd say number one, uh, just kind of the connection and the communication, you know, along the whole front. Um, not only just from a pass rush or games, but uh, the ability of the whole unit to work together and uh, kind of use the analogy of you know, like being in a mechanic. You're looking under the hood. What's not right? Why is it not going? And uh, you had to make some changes and some adjustments and you shut the hood and then you start it up again. And uh, so for us, starting it up again led to better communication and uh, groups working together uh, so we'd be at our best. So um, it wasn't just one thing. I thought it was a, you know, collectively we played better. Getting them on third down, or you got them at big times too. The, the uh, Campbell one on third and two at the goal line, and yep. uh, uh, then Vix on fourth down there too, and then I think it was another third down one. Y'all stressed that, hey, you know, this pass rush situation, we need to get it. We did, and um, you know, we were also fortunate early. We uh, knocked them back, you know, with a few tackles for loss or a penalty, which creates some, you know, matchups that you like better for sure. But uh, more than anything, um, just owning the matchup that you have and, and being able to, to capitalize when those moments come. And I thought the guys did a good job on that. A month, did you say? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, not from from our building. Dan, I'm sorry. Uh, Dan, I, I apologize. I know you've been asked this, about this a lot. And I apologize also for my continuing ignorance on certain subjects. But are you still coordinating the defense? Sure, no problem. No, not an issue at all. I'll be glad to explain everything to you. So, um, yeah, I'm in all the defensive meetings. I'm in all here, every call, obviously. Uh, but we definitely lean on Jeff Ulbrich um, through all the first and second down calls. And we've moved Raheem Morris over uh, into the secondary. And uh, he's working through a lot of the third down and the red zone calls. Uh, through all the planning, Jerome Henderson obviously is a big part of the pass game on you know, all downs. But that's how we've uh, you know, moved it up. During the game, I may, hey, Dan, what do you think? Or if there's a call I think we should change, I would do that. So I'd say we're definitely collaborating together. Um, but I'm definitely leaning on to um, Jeff and Ra more. And uh, why wouldn't I? You know, when, um, those guys are capable and ready and doing a good job, so I'm definitely leaning on them more than uh, we have at any other point. So are you? I'm sorry. Are you principally now more involved with the with the defensive line than anything else? I would say yes, and uh, which also allows me to have uh, some things I didn't feel like our entire team, you know, was where I wanted to be. So I was able to, you know, be in spaces where maybe I wasn't able to. So um, I thought I wanted to recognize me first, like I'd said a long time ago. Uh, you know, my certainly, I don't have an ego that's anything bigger than our team. That's the most important thing is, you know, how we can do the best job for the players. So that's what I felt was best at this time. And so that's why I really leaned on to Jeff and uh, Raheem specifically uh, to take on a larger role. And uh, like he expected them to, they answered the challenge uh, very strongly. Well, you yeah, talked about, about how the, talk about this past couple of weeks about our version as a union. Right. And for like, for example, like you know, the team's done with uh, Big B's name right. and uh, Tech McKinley. Yep. Uh, how, how was it, you know, being able to see that come to fruition, you know, when it's something that y'all have been working on? Well, I was, number one, I was happy for the players because, um, you know, they've been working hard at that. And so when you don't get the results and you're kind of working and trying, you know, and it's still not meeting the mark that you've set, it gets frustrating and there's doubt and, you know, disappointment that creeps in. So the ability to stay with it, and I thought more than anything, like staying with the plan. 
and to say, okay, here's how we need to play this team. And I thought communication-wise, it just didn't back off and uh, stayed right with the plan uh, all the way through the end of the game. And it may have not seemed like a meaningful play at the end to not allow them in, but I think that showed um, they're, they're willing to fight for the whole thing. And uh, that, that one play, although it may not show up big on the stat sheet uh, by Vic, I thought was a good play by him. Any further updates on Devontae Freeman and how much time he could miss? Uh, with Edo Smith out too, do you plan on adding depth or making roster moves? We did make one roster move to a, our practice squad, but um, we were pretty deep at that position. So uh, if Free doesn't go, and it'll be a long shot for Hoop and for Free, um, sometimes with injuries, there's you know it can be faster. So you don't want to pigeonhole a player into, okay, it's, you know, two weeks and they're out for all, oh, he's not pushing it to go. Like, that's not the case. These two guys are working as hard as they can. And uh, if you say, oh, he's out six weeks and he's back in one, well, he must have not been that hurt. So, like, we're just going to make sure they'll be back out on the field when they're ready to do the things they can do. Uh, we're going to take great care of the guys. That's our number one obligation. But at running back, um, Kenyon's been there, Brian Hill's been there, and Allison. So uh, if Free can't go, and it would be a long shot this week for him to make it back. But like I said, we're going to give all these guys the chances they can, then those three would be our featured running backs. Usually we carry three into a game. And who did you add to the practice for? Uh, Reynolds. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, as far as Brian Hill goes, uh, how, how does a guy who's been cut a couple times, yeah. how have you seen him working himself into this position to be yeah. counted upon? Him? You know, I think... Um, if you ask around the locker room, like he's one of the players that has really uh, stood out to his teammates. Uh, it's the work ethic. So I think from the last season towards the end, uh, he had played in, in a few ball games and played well. It kind of carried over into the season. Uh, he and Ido and uh, Devante all kind of, you know, were getting in the mix quite a bit. And then the special team side really started to take place for Brian, um, where he could make an impact on that just from kind of just sheer will and, and toughness to go. So from a team standpoint, he's somebody that uh, we've all relied on, and we've seen this growth happen. And when you see that, you really get pumped for a guy to say, okay, he was at a spot and then took his own game to a new space. And uh, we got a lot of trust and belief in him, um, and he's definitely ready for the challenge. What can you tell? We know that there's a guess that Kaepernick's going to have a tryout here right. at this facility on Saturday. Is there anything you can tell us about how that came about uh, from y'all's standpoint? Yeah, not from our standpoint. I guess um, maybe an analogy would be like um, we're going to have the workout here, um, but we're not the ones that are running the workout, but it's a league workout. So I'd say the analogy I would say is, you know, the, the combine's at the Colts, but they don't run the combine. <laughs> and so um, that'd be my best analogy for you. But I'm sure there'll be uh, turnout from you know other clubs as well. Is there but any concern about taking that on here, obviously with the kind of the, all the you know obviously publicity and such. You'd, you'd have to ask being in the middle yeah, of that. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't uh, part of that. And one more thing too: Do y'all plan on having a representative there? I'm sure that we will. No scout likes a workout uh, better than a scout, or who likes a workout better than a scout? Nobody. So I'm sure uh, most teams will have uh, people around. If, if you had a workout, there might be somebody that would show. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he could be a game wrecker. And uh, the reason being is he's got so many explosive plays. There's, you know, positions that don't have that many explosive plays. And so they're not just in the run game, they're not just in the pass game. And so that's what makes him so unique. There's running backs that have, you know, 16, 20-yard runs and receivers that have obviously those kind. But here's a player that has both. And uh, I don't know if it's 25 or 26 explosive plays by himself. That's pretty remarkable. And the most of the damage in the run is when he gets to the second level. Here's a 10-yard run that goes for 50. And uh, in the pass game, here's a check down that goes for a long way. And so to me, that's a big deal because uh, your tackling had better be on point. And that's with space. That's when he's at his very best. So um, he's really for two years almost taken almost all the snaps. So you can say what kind of toughness this player has pass protection running it you know the whole thing so he's uh yeah he's a good one back on the top of when you talking about Brian Hill Brian Hill yep. who had a really good training camp yep and uh I was you know I, and I would say that Jay Graham had one of those as well right how comforting is it for a guy like that coming off the kind of training camp he did and possibly looking at Austin for being out for a few weeks right is that you know how com comforting for you for a guy to come well, I think for the you know guys that and all of you have covered the team so closely, uh, you've heard us talk about Plan D, 
and developing players. And so you take a lot of pride in knowing here was a, an undrafted one and Jaden and with Brian had been cut. And so, OK, man, let's start right from the very beginning again. And I think it goes to show when a player is going to any length to get the job done uh, where they won't be denied, I think those two are at it. And so Jaden has been improving as we're going. Sometimes you need experience to play. You know, you can be out here practicing, and that's the hardest part sometimes of being on the practice squad. You get to be in practice, well, there's no pads to where, like, yeah, I can make that catch. Like, yeah, you're not going to get wrecked. You know? <laughs> so in the game, how do you practice full team sports? full speed special teams play and tackling uh, but he's definitely somebody that we just keep seeing getting better and better and Brian has been at that spot for a while now uh, from I would say midpoint last year his hands improved the running style and so it just kind of continued through the off season. Uh, but those two and specifically you've heard us talk about plan D and I think if I had to list two right now they'd be at the front of it. I certainly think there's, you know, I'd say the second half, some of Seattle, I thought we started to make progress. And then these, you know, four quarters, we've got a lot of work to do and new challenge this week with the communication. But I definitely felt uh, a tick up in that. And that's such an important part of it, because when a mistake happens at that position, it gets magnified um, to the highest level. And so I was pleased with, you know, the the increase in that and uh, new week, new challenges. But yeah, I'd like to see that go up again. Coach, you, you always talk about um, trust the training. Yeah. And, and you made some moves last week and, and it kind of all came together for that game. Do you think now you got everything in place the way you need it to, to carry that success forward? Well, I think I certainly felt during the week, okay, there were some markers I was looking for to see if, uh, you know, that would be validated because one move actually there's a domino effect that goes with that and so one big move whether it was a coaching thing or a position move for a player there's other people that are affected and i thought um, the coaching side did a good job of making sure okay new face in the running back room at wide receivers and again in the in the secondary so um it would be on the players too to make sure they had uh you know new coach in their room so to speak not new like they hadn't met him before but still new new style and so i thought that was a good start for us um, but i anticipate uh, us building on that you know there's always things you're trying to get better at and i'm hopeful at this point like i was using the analogy of the mechanic okay shut the hood start it up and that sounds better and so i'm hopeful that uh, now that it's sounding better we're able to move forward and play like the team we're capable of Quinn, how is preparing for this for Carolina different with Allen back there compared to Cam? Yeah, well, I'd say a few things. One, um, you know, some of the short yardage plays and red zone plays, you know, that Cam was involved in, that was unique, not just to that offense, but unique to the NFL. Not all players were going to have a, you know, quarterback that would be a designed, wasn't a part of a read or an option, but a designed run. And so very few teams would do that. And so that's, that was a change. What I think they do, and like most good teams do, is featuring the players in their best ways. So McCaffrey has a bigger role. DJ Moore has a bigger role. And those two players in conjunction with the new quarterback, how are they featured maybe differently? And so I would say different style, you know, at quarterback, obviously, especially in some of those situations, but utilizing different players in the, you know, in different ways. And um, one guy who still continues to produce at a high level is Olsen, you know, and the outbreaking routes and crossing routes. So um, he's one that just, you know, continues to put out good performance after good performance. He's certainly somebody that has our respect, but a different offense, especially in some of the situations. But I would say they were different from 31 others as well in that space. All right, you guys have a good afternoon.